Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash and in today's video I'd like to show you how you can go from this to this. In short, what I'm going to be showing you today is my process for creating drums in the medium of house music, and I'm just going to be doing a couple of the things that I would commonly do when writing drums for one of my tracks. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So I've got this small idea here that is a bass line and a chord progression, and it's a four bar loop. Let's have a quick listen. It's, uh, it's quite pretty, it's a bit sad and melancholic, it's exactly the kind of vibe that I love working on. Um, and I thought it might be quite fun to, to together um, see how I might go about making some drums for this. And uh, the stylistic choices that I'm going to make uh, to fit with sort of the mood of what this, this music is giving me. Um, I've very nicely already organised everything into colours, so it is just a case now of... Um, building some drums around it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a kick drum going and I'm going to scrap everything else I said in my previous video about house drummer and instead I'm going to go completely from the beginning here and um, have a have a little look I suppose at how I would go about making one of these kind of uh, groovy sad house tracks. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a 4-4 kick in and I'm doing it manually and there we go. And I put this on a MIDI channel just so I can uh, put different kicks on easily. Um, let's make it red. Let's have a quick listen to what it sounds like with this one. Now I like that kick because it's got a lot of... Um, it cuts through the mix. And those kind of kicks sound really good with this kind of like um, uplifting house music because you can... It almost like helps accentuate the clap or whatever knocks you have on there. And it's also very effective for them being able to filter for a bit. And then you bring the kick back in, you've got that lovely click. Um, I'm actually quite happy with that one, but let's just try a couple others just to check to see if we don't have anything else. That's almost the same kind of kick. And in fact, I prefer that because it's got less of that like nasal kick and it's more of just like, oh, it punches through quite nicely. I'm just going to turn these down a bit. Um, minus four. Okay, so that's that's a kick I'm quite happy with, and I'm just going to leave it at that for now. And we're going to move on to the the next thing I usually add is a hat because I think that when you're building drums, you have to start you know walk before you run. You have to truly get like a good sounding kick, a good sounding clap or snare, and a good sounding hat. And those three elements together as a trifecta. Um, combine in many ways to create the real groove and foundation of a track. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do a hat now. I usually just shift the notes forward, save having to draw them again. And let's just let's try out a couple of different hi-hats then. I'm thinking that something quite chuggy, not very digital. Oh, that, that could work. Yeah, in this kind of situation, I, I would always, always on the offbeat hat, bring it down quite short because I start with a short hat and if I then want a longer hat, that comes as a sort of an additional thing. But the basic groove usually comes from a quite tight hat that I have. Let's see, volume one. I really like that. Seems like there's a bit of unnecessary top end in it and maybe even top high end. So let's try the... Let's try the band pass filter. Yeah, you can see how much that just instantly opens it up a bit. Let's bring that down to minus 40. Okay, lovely. Now, I, the next thing I would add is a clap. And um, I don't have a clap in the song for all the song most of the time. I usually um, have it as a sort of an accentuation moment. Uh, so let's have a look here. Um, again, we need to bring that volume down a bit. And I like that vibe, but I really want a bit more high end, a bit more crisp in the clap. So, I mean, these kind of ones sound quite tight. I like that vibe a lot, but again, I would shorten it. And I would shorten it just enough that it doesn't go into being a single hit. Like that. 
that's nice. So you get a bit of that flam coming through. Okay, so now we have the basis of some drums, and I'm going to listen through to them on their own. Let's see what they sound like. Oh, come on. What did I, oh, I set it to shift. So I think that's actually quite an interesting three sounds. I like that, and that's a great starting point to now move off from. So let's put these in a group and call it drums. Very nice, and you'll notice that I've got swing enabled on here, and it's not a huge amount of swing, but if I started adding notes um, in the 16th spot, I think that really helps with this kind of music, is to have not too much swing, you know, we're not talking about having, although that does sound fucking excellent. But we're gonna dial it back a little bit for now. Because without it, Sounds cool, but it doesn't have that same vibe. Okay, so we've got this now. Um, what I'm going to move on to now is just finding some sort of small top loop, like uh, something quite subtle that I can just have in the background to sort of glue those three sounds together even more. So I want something really simple, and I'm going to be looking here for what even just looks like a simple waveform as well. You can usually point them out. In fact, I've uh, favorited this one already, and this is because it's the perfect kind of loop that it's it hasn't got enough personality that um, you can truly notice it and go, oh, it's that loop. But it has all of the right sounds of having a bit of like filtered kick, hi-hat, and clap. And you'll see that when I now mix this in ever so slightly, and I start this quite quiet, you'll see that it adds a really lovely back end to it. And we're not talking having it here. We're just talking having it around there. So I can bring this down minus 18 or minus 24. And I'll call that the glue top because all that's doing is just providing us with a bit of... Um... One thing I will change about that is I don't want the hat to ring so long. So I'm just going to gate it. That's perfect, that nice little tight top. And you'll see now that that just adds. If we bring the volume up a tiny bit more now, let's go to minus 18. Probably sort this out a little bit more. Yeah, nice. That's subtle and it will do the job. So I'm also going to roll off a little bit of that low end. I'm going to bring that down a little bit as well. So what that's done is it's just created um, a bit of a feel. You know, a little bit. And that none of those sounds are now taking over. All of the original sounds still cut through, but we've added a bit of texture in the back. And I'm always one um, for the sort of maximalist approach. I know a lot of people um, probably take a lot of pride in managing to use the fewest amount of things to achieve the maximum emotion. But I like the idea of using the most amount of things to make the most amount of emotion. It's not a case of either or. It's a case of which side of the spectrum you fall on, I guess. And... Ooh, that's beautiful. So this is another example of when I would go in and I would probably just add this quite quietly too because we're now starting to... We're now starting to bring in a little bit of that that room, the room that has been used on this. And by now including that as well. I think that's quite lovely too. So I'm going to call that glue top 2. 
And as I said, the point of these loops is to be really personality-less personality enough that you can't even really notice them. They just exist there. I might actually turn, I might pitch this loop up a little bit. So let's see. Okay, that sounds cool. I'm going to bounce it to a new audio channel just so uh, I don't have to keep that gate on there. And I can also now go in and slice and place and quantize because uh, I want this to be really on, on the nose groove. Um, let's slice this as well. No, let's not. Let's leave that one for now. And I can now get rid of all of this stuff. I'm going to bring out a bit of that low end as well. Okay, yeah, that is absolutely perfect. You can see how this is adding quite a lot to the beat. But barely anything, just enough. And that's sort of my maximalist approach, is how much can you add that doesn't sound like you've added too much, but keeping it sort of just, keeping it in the family. So the next thing I might now do is do some stuff on the low end to sort of, um, to talk with the bass line. And I like to often use a sort of low tom, like a... Uh, an 808 conga for example so I'm going to see if I've got oh this is perfect and what I'll do is I'll usually just feel it out to see but I'll usually start with just checking to see if my all-time favorite rhythm which is this boom 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 sounds good in the context so let's put that to C3 and have a quick listen I'll bring the volume down on that a bit and let's listen in context with the bass Detect the root key. And I'll go to, I guess this song is in E minor, I think. So let's set this to, where was my note gone? Okay, that's cool. Bring it down a bit more in volume. And I'll often, with these, duplicate it up and have a bit of variation at the end, like doing another one of these. Might even look be good to do it up there. Okay, that's fantastic. So we'll call that uh, 808 Conga. Ooh, I don't like mixed caps. Okay, cool. So we've got a vibe going on there now. We haven't actually listened to it with the music. Let's have a quick listen. Okay, sounding interesting. But what I'd like to add now is we've got, uh, if we look on the frequency spectrum, we have quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of this high end, but it's more in just sort of sharp piercing like a hat or a clap. It would be quite nice to have something in this range that sort of holds its own a little bit more, a little bit kind of um, crunchy. What I'm thinking is some sort of shaker. And I usually use, um, I have this wonderful little patch uh, from, I forget what it's called. Let's see. Oh, the Ethno World 6. Uh, they've got an incredible amount of instruments, like uh, so many and then the cool thing is you can see information about it where it's from and then there's little recordings and there's just a huge amount but in the world percussion the shakers this African shaker set is just fantastic and I pretty much always use one of these for my shaker so let's have a quick lesson I'm, I want sort of a 16th note okay so that's cool one thing I love about adding a shaker is that shakers inherently are quite human in their timing and they're, they're a bit off a lot of the time. And that helps sort of tie together a groove that you can have sort of disparagingly groovy rhythms that all sort of come together when you have a shaker because the shaker's like, yo, I'm not keeping time perfectly, so none of you need to as well. And I'll get into that a little bit more when I start adding some percussion elements to this. Um, but you'll see that this adds a really lovely human feel. I can 
bring down the volume a little bit more even. That's lovely. Okay, I might also now add uh, a second clap because I've got this clap, which is quite a digital one and digital in the sense that it's like, it doesn't necessarily sound human. Um, so I'm gonna add, I've got this fantastic instrument called the Hand Clap Studio. And this I got on Black Friday the other day and it's exactly what you expect it is. It's got four different types of clap and you can choose from one to eight people. Bring the volume down on that. Where is the volume? There we go. And you can get some really good variation of results because you can make it so it's dry, eight people, and a bit looser. Change the pitch up a bit. a bit of more upper end, a bit of compression. Lovely, let's bring the volume down on that. Bit of room. And the room is actually very important. You'll see how this really does add to the vibe. Um, okay, so we've got our second clap here. I might just record that to audio as well, just so then we've then got it. Oh, in fact, no, I don't want to record it to audio that short because there's a bit of variation. Let's record eight bars of it. <laughs> okay, we can now duplicate across everything else. So we've now got eight bars to work with. Let's call this um, live clap. Get rid of the top one. Get rid of that. I hate having text on the clips, unless they're informative. Okay, really nice. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do now is add some sort of extra hat. And by extra hat, I mean something that like I can I can, I can have that knot in at the beginning and then when I bring it in, it really vibes things up. And one way we can see this now is sort of taking out the clap. So that's a really nice vibe that we're getting. Um, let's now find a second hat then. And I'd like something that's, again, more uplifting and maybe sharper than the other hat we've got. So maybe this one. Let's try the Bristol, the Bristol closed hat. And I'm not going to shorten this one. I'm going to keep this full length. And let's see what happens when I bring it in. Let's have the clap in. And here we go. See, see what a vibe that is. You know, we're, we're not interfering with the previous one. We're just adding that. And, uh, you know, to see in context what it would be like. Um, cool, I need to play with the frequency on that a little bit. Maybe we'll change. The... Okay, cool. Now, one other thing I'd like to maybe add is some sort of other things happening in the low end other than this 808 conga and this bass line and by that I, I sort of mean like little moments in the low end that when you're dancing to it on a big sound system you're almost like what is that what's that sound and i usually do this by either um using a collection of kicks you know, or i'll get to the other uh, the other um kick collection well i'll get to the other way after this but i'll usually add i've got a lot of kicks on this thing. And what I'll do is try and add just a lot of kicks in places that add interest to the groove. So I'll actually start with just one, one bar and let's see if there's anything I can do. Okay, so that's cool. I'm gonna copy and paste that to there because I'd like that to repeat. 
Um, and now let's do on the second layer, maybe let's do some sort of let's see what this sounds like. Oh, I can swap those out. Okay. So that doesn't sound great, but maybe we can do Okay, that's cool. Let's get rid of that end bit. Okay, so that could be quite cool. And let's see this with the bass line. Okay, cool. And you'll see that that sounds a bit aggressive, and that's because the key is we need to filter this a lot, so it's just on the low end that we're getting it. And this, this one here could actually be... Do another one there. I actually like this one the most. And these I'm going to put really quite quiet in the mix because I almost don't want to hear them. And you can see how that does add quite a nice little extra bass texture to it. Let's listen to just the drums without it. Really, really cool. So I'll call that low end. Okay, so the other way that I would go around adding that low end coolness is often just searching for perk loops and seeing if we can find something that's quite bassy and sort of just a bit messy, really. Those are your friends in this instance. Let's go back to that um, hang drum loop. This might be perfect for our situation. So I'm going to take that and let's listen. If I pitch this down a couple of times. Ah, there we go. And you can see that that is a really, really nice rhythm that we've got going there. And I could actually probably just slice this in place and quantize it. Because as long as uh, we filter out any of those top end clicks, Okay, that's quite cool. And it might actually be better to just have the... We don't need those sounds. So that's what's quite cool about these things. It's just sort of impacts that really highlight um, that you know, it's a downbeat. So I could probably even just copy and paste that. I don't think they're any different. And let's see. And depending on what's happening in the bass line, we've got a couple of things happening there. Let's listen to it in context. We could probably get rid of these first ones, and I'm just going to get rid of all of them for now, but not delete. Just, um, just deactivate them, because it's quite nice just to have a boom. Let's get the pitch right first.
Okay, there we go. So this might actually be a bit too uh, a bit too present for this, but the the concept stands. If you if you didn't have that bass line in there and you were just sort of doing some like techy things, I think this is a really nice way to um, add a bit of coolness and a bit of swagger to um, your beats. If I were to add just that second bit in that time, you can see how this very easily builds a cool groove. Okay, that's really cool. In fact, I am just going to keep that because that's quite a nice thing to have when there isn't a bass line. So it's a way to keep it's a way to keep things grooving. When there isn't the bass line, and say you were to have that come out when the bass line comes in. Anyways, cool. Let me just remove those. Um, get rid of that. So the next thing I'd like to add is what I like to call salt and pepper moments. And um, let's just put a oh, low end uh, intro, low end. And these salt and pepper moments are basically just little micro moments of coolness that um, together uh, all talk to each other and create like a lovely feeling. And the way that I do that is I usually just go through and try and find tiny moments in top loops like that is perfect and what I mean by perfect is those two hits that's it that's all I'm talking about so if I get rid of those and I get rid of everything but those two those two hits we've got that um, that to me is a lovely uh, little extra piece so let's have a quick listen and you don't have to do it sort of on the same spot. You can try out different places for it. As long as you stay on, on the grid, um, you'll often find a lot of very nice. I'd probably go forward a little bit more. Really nice. And you can bring these down quite a lot in volume. And the key to these as well is to not overuse them. You want to be able to fill, um, let me put S&P 1. You want to be able to use them across maybe 16 or 32 bars. So when I work this way, I'll often like copy and paste them. We've got two of those happening in, in eight bars. Let me find some other weird things. Okay, that's cool. We can take that one as well. And let's see what that sounds like, because it's, oftentimes it's just a few pieces of it. So let's get rid of that and everything else and see what this sounds like. If we bring the volume down. Might be quite cool to have that happen there, actually. Or maybe even here. we cut those in place and quantize them cool maybe I'm gonna filter off a little bit of that top end oh that's quite nice is actually to use a resonance um, so let's go for E2 or E3 ah there we go yeah, so that's another lovely thing you can do is you can take a, a percussive sound like this and if you just filter it with uh, quite a high resonance and the frequency at the key of the song, you can end up with some really cool sounds. If we add a bit of reverb to that, um, let's go for just a small room. Um, no pre-delay, what am I talking about? Oh, lovely. That's actually probably quite good to have at the beginning of the bars. Really nice. So let's keep going. Let's keep finding more sounds.
This usually works best when you're actually listening to the track and then playing the loops over it because then you can at least hear what the context is like. That to me seems fantastic as well, just using this duh, 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 duh. Yeah, if we just get rid of everything else but that. These things are often very nice at the end of a bar. Bring the volume down on that. So let's find some more sounds. Oftentimes as well you'll find something like this which just has a really dope clap sound and it's quite nice as well like we did with the hat to have a second clap that's able to come in. Um, I know we've got the, the hand clap as well, but this kind of thing might sound really cool to have um, a bit of a beef up um, after a section. So let's bring the volume down on those as well. Make sure that they're adequately quiet. Okay, it's not as cool as I was thinking, but um, the point still stands. This could work maybe. Let's take, um, let's take this. So that sound from here to here, I think, could be a really cool little salt and pepper piece. Let's bring this in. If we get rid of everything else and just have... So let's duplicate everything now and work more in having a 16 bars to go with. ones as well can be quite cool. Let's take uh, just a small section of that first bit. That would be nice. Oh, what am I recording on? Uh, yeah, let's see what that sounds like. And of course we could use that little uh, show um, preview transient onsets to make it nice and short. That's quite cool, but I think that could happen maybe on the bits when that one doesn't. So let's put that here and here, and let's see what that sounds like. Bring the volume down a bit more. And it's all these little ticka ticka ticks that are then building that, if you remember, we just had a kick, a hat, and a clap. And together we've now made find a few more sounds. These, th these kind of ride loops as well never sound that nice on their own, but a little trick that I have is to take these and bring them down quite a lot in volume and also then just take a filter and bandpass almost just the best section and then let's just compress the shit out of that. And this one could actually do with maybe even then a rather extreme EQ curve. That's rolled off a nice bit at the top end. Let's uh, bring this down a bit in volume. We go through the pitches until we find something that seems quite nice in context. That's a nice bit of ring, so I'll call that like ringy hat, and I'll bring that down again a bit in volume. Yeah, that's cool. 
because you'll see that it doesn't really add too much. Let's bring it down a bit more again. But when you need like a moment for everything to vibe up, we've got this vibe and then we can suddenly go, uh. Okay, let's find a few more salt and pepper pieces. Ooh, that to me sounds like that's going to be quite a nice little piece as we just use that. And having that in the background again, this is another piece that we can just sort of add in to vibe up a section. I don't know whether pitch wise this will work, but. Oh, it does work perfectly. And that works really nicely with this. Um, Really cool. I'm going to drag this up here to the low end, actually, because that's more of like a conga sound. And what was this? Uh, S and P5. Let's find a couple more, and then I'm going to send you on your merry way to get playing yourselves. What might be quite nice is a bit of a live drum feel. So um, sometimes you'll find like a cool drum feel is absolutely fantastic. So um, I'm sure you know when, when you play a drum kit, when you play an open hat, in order to play then a closed hat, you have to then close it. So it sort of chokes it off by itself. And uh, these sounds, that is just a fantastic, oh, I've, okay, yeah, this is brilliant. So all I want is that open hat, but I don't want this kick. So I can just in fact take uh, one of these hats here and a closed hat after an open hat instantly sounds like a proper drum kit let's see if we can let's use this bit perhaps cool let's bring that volume up a bit and we can even tighten it okay yeah this is a really really classic um uh classic tash trick on vibing up the ends of bars is just having this you'll see how lovely this sounds Oh, that is just brilliant. And you can get away with having that on almost every um, on every bar because it's such a small little piece. Uh, let's have a listen again. And the cool thing about having them on the end of every bar is they all talk differently to um, obviously the different other salt and peppers you've got happening. Let's find some more sounds. Okay, that's cool. But we are now getting into the territory. Okay, let's take this loop. We can have this as a small section of... I'm going to get rid of that open hat bit. Right, let's see what actually what happens here. Okay, that's cool. I like having a nice disco groove in the background a lot of the time as well. And I'll just, I'll bring off the low end. And just bring it down in volume again and just see what that sounds like. Just bring it down even a bit more. Okay, let's just leave that muted for a sec and go. Um, is my loop length? Ah, that's why. Okay, we need to be quite a lot shorter here. So let me just. Okay, cool.
this is what I'm saying about my maximalist approach is it's like how many more things can I add that will make it sound more my own ironically using samples a lot of the time um, so I'm gonna bring that up here just to the glue top and I just want to find a couple more little sounds in fact, we're on live drums now. Oh, I remember what I was going to do. So the final thing that I pretty much always add to my house tracks is um, live percussion. And by live, I mean uh, from uh, VST. Um, but I'm going to be using Superior Drummer's Latin percussion. I've got some bongos in storage, but I could never quite get the same results as um, just a, a good uh, sample-based recording. So I'm going to go to my Latin... Uh, I'm going to go for Latin Cuban percussion because I think they've got slightly better broken down uh, sounds. I mean, how good do these congas sound? So the cool thing about Latin percussion and sort of, well, percussion in general is that a lot of the times that you're just using the same rhythm in multiple places, but the specific rhythm you choose will greatly alter the effect of the beat. For example, if you want um, for a drum beat to feel like quite fast in the house realm, using a caballo, which means horse in Spanish, um, the caballo will even will speed it up even more because it's a very fast, repetitive pattern. Uh, this is what it sounds like on one conga. It sounds really good on a single conga, but it also sounds great once you start bringing in the uh, the extra off notes or even the third. We're going to try just the single conga for now. So let's just loop that. I mean, stop it. How much of a vibe, how much of an improvement on the vibe is having something like that in the mix? Oh, check that out. I'm just going to add the... Oh, okay. And you ready? Might need to actually change the bass sound to make it a bit more. Oh, that's really quite lovely. We're going to have to do quite a lot of work on uh, sorting out the mix of these things, but for the sake of just creating a cool environment that we can then work on later, let's now jump in and find a bongo as well. And I like to just use the traditional martillo pattern, um, which I'm not sure if there is in here. Maybe I can just search for martillo. Uh, and that is um, just, oh, here we go. It's just the most basic bongo pattern. Let's try this one. And you can see how it adds perfectly on to the conga sound. And what's quite nice is pitching, say, one of them to the left, and then having the other one off to the right as if you're in a natural room. see how all of those sounds I've been adding are now all tying together to be this really quite beautiful living breathing organism of a sound. Um, just for the sake of adding one more little sound, maximalism all over again, let's just add a shaker. Because I think another, another shaker but from a different instrument could be quite nice as well. So let's find, uh, that's a cowbell, let's go for straight 4-4. Yeah, doing a nice eighth note pattern is a really cool way to add a bit of a bit more groove because obviously it's just playing what the kick is playing. Okay, I'm really, really into that.
Oh, anyways. Well, folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that this video has been useful. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like and subscribe and press that notifications button if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my future videos. As always, I am a Bitwig certified trainer in case anyone would like some one-to-one -one tuition. And if you'd like to take your support a step further, then please consider becoming a patron too. In the meantime, happy Wednesday and happy creating.